the Leonardo organization is to work with artists interested in science and technology and help document their work and promote it uh, and find new ways to establish new kinds of collaborations between artists and scientists. I think one way of uh, posing the problem today um, is uh, we, we live in a world which is changing very rapidly um, with the environmental problems and climate change and so on. Um, usually culture adapts slowly as the world changes. Now the world is changing so quickly that we have to actually redesign the future of culture. So I think bringing together artists and scientists and engineers is one way to do that. I, I think artists and scientists have sort of different reasons why they explore the world. Um, obviously they're both trying to make sense of it. Um, but I, I think uh, in general uh, a scientist will stop asking the question when you sort of have a, a scientific model or simulation or explanation and then you say, aha, I understand it and then you go work on something else. Um, I, th I think the artist is driven by different urgencies, by different agendas, by different concerns. Um, because obviously the, the artist is very focused on individual and group perception of the world and, and so on. And so um, sometimes these meet, but not always. Well, the main problem is, is sinus uh, work in ghettos. I work in a research lab with a big fence around it and you need a badge to get in. <laughs> it's not like Siant where anybody can walk in. <laughs> so the, the biggest the problem really is the institutional isolation of scientists. Mm -hmm. um, now that used to be the case with technology 40 years ago when, when the Leonardo organization was started. On the whole planet there were maybe 30 artists that had used computers. Now it's probably uh, half a million. <laughs> <laughs> so access to high technology is now an everyday thing. In your cell phone you have more computing power than people had 30 years ago. Yeah. So. Uh, so the, the technology um, is much more intermingled with society, but in general science is very isolated. Okay, so one of the people who's here is Annick Bureau. <laughs> Come here, Annick. Actually, the picture behind us is a project that Annick has been helping uh, develop. So Annick will explain the Lovely Weather project. <laughs> lovely Weather. Yeah, the Lovely Weather is an urban climate uh, project. Uh, we have uh, five residencies uh, in uh, Ireland, in the Donegal County in Ireland. And one of the projects is matching um, a small spot in uh, Ireland and the planet Mars. So and actually this, uh, this page, you know, this little rock. dot is a rock, which is actually on Mars, and which has been named uh, Olean Ra, which means the Red Island. And the Red Island is a small, tiny island in the north of Ireland. So it's a kind of twinning between planet Mars and Ireland. So comparing the climate on Mars and the climate on Ireland, and the artist is working with the scientists. And right now, the robot on the surface of Mars is moving towards that Toward rock. This and is going to touch it soon, maybe in three weeks. <laughs> the robot moves very slowly, so, so the artist is working with the scientists at the moment. Um, but they have worked with the same uh, scientific methods that they work on Mars, doing rock samples, uh, well, water samples in Ireland, which is quite easy, <laughs> um, less easy on Mars. They have uh, used the exact same methods and trying to compare the actual climate on mm -hmm. Mars as a potential future for the climate on Earth. <laughs> so and that's an example of uh, the, the Lovely Weather Project. Mm -hmm. Basically, is trying to encourage artists to work with climate scientists or uh, environmental scientists and come up with ways of just uh, contextualizing culturally uh, these kind of questions. So that, that's one example. Mm -hmm. So I work in Marseille in a, in a big astrophysics laboratory and I'm in the, the cosmology group. Uh, and the big scientific question in cosmology, cosmology is the study of the universe on very big scales, uh, is that we now think most of the universe, um, like 95% of it, is filled with not the same kind of matter that you and I are made out of, but some other kind of matter and we don't know what it is. So since we're ignorant, we call it dark matter. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and so many, many scientists at the moment, many astronomers, are trying to design new kinds of telescopes to try and study dark matter. And it's difficult because dark matter doesn't emit any light. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a very difficult problem. I mean, one of the teams that's competing to build a satellite, so, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's not yet funded. And so both the, the American Space Agency, NASA, and the European Space Agency are trying to put together this big project. And we, we've been building prototype instruments uh, that would fly eventually on, on, that, on that satellite. And I, if you look at the history of science, um, science turns out to be a good investment for society. And so, um, and obviously a good, a good example would, would be right now is that we're running out of oil. We have to mm -hmm. shift to other four sources of energy. And so scientists are obviously working on those kind of questions. In the case of astronomy, uh, apart from the really deep cultural interests that societies have always had in astronomy, Astronomy has always been closely allied with uh, applications. So, of course, mm -hmm. 300 years ago, astronomers were navigators, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they were paid very well <laughs> uh, to help people navigate on the planet. Uh, but even today, astronomers are the best builders of clocks, which is what you need for GPS navigation and, and so on. Um, astronomers also, uh, historically, have always wanted to make be better pictures of the sky. So actually, the, the, the little uh, CCD in your cell phone camera, uh, astronomers were some of the first people that developed that technology for CCDs. Um, and in fact, today, before I came here, I signed uh, some approvals for a startup company in our astrophysics lab. And they're taking a camera they developed for astronomy. And they, their, their application, which is sort of interesting, if you remember uh, a few years ago, the Concorde supersonic plane, mm -hmm had an accident, and it was because when it was going on the runway, there was metal on the runway. So um, their application is to build a camera that looks at the runway and identifies mm -hmm. all dangerous objects. Um, and obviously birds that land and go away are not dangerous, but large groups of birds are a problem and dangerous to planes and pieces of metal are dangerous. So, you know, the same technicians that are one day analyzing the sky are now analyzing uh, airport runways. So <laughs> astronomy for tens of thousands of years has always had this very close link to many different kinds of applications. The, the, the other question, um, of course, would be if you look at the total budget that's put in, in astronomy um, or space science or satellites, it's, it's actually a very small investment of society as a whole. Um, so it's probably a good insurance policy.